Hello everybody, I'm here with uh, Coach Ron Rudler. He was the head football coach, a former head football coach at McDowell High School in Erie, PA. Mm -hmm. Coach, how are you today? I'm doing well, Mo. Thank you for having me and thanks for doing what you're doing, man. There's a lot of people that are into it and appreciate it and everything and I know you put a lot of time in, but it's going noticed for sure, not unnoticed. Yeah, yeah it's definitely been fun. I'm glad to have all you guys be a part of this. It's just memories that we've been sharing and oh, the yeah, camaraderie that's there you know we all got that football to share absolutely. You know? so absolutely. let's let's uh talk about um where you're from uh, what city what state sure i i grew up in albion not far from here in the west county uh so my whole uh you know in my younger days uh formative days whatever you want to call it um uh, you know, right from the get-go, I was involved in uh, different sports I could get involved in. And, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, actually, it's kind of strange because my, my mom, my dad wasn't a sports guy very much, and my brother definitely wasn't. But uh, I think I was influenced heavily with uh, adults that were in, uh, they used to have what they call the Albion Rec Program. Okay. So we could go down to the Borough Park. Um, and for six I th weeks, I think it was in the summer, it was open every weekday, and um, there was some great men. A lot of a lot of people locally uh, may re recall the name Joe Lysick, who was a, a huge athlete at uh, I believe he was at East High School. Okay, and then he started Drake University. And then I had a guy that was an Ohio guy, uh, Dick Sabo, and just other people from that worked that program. Uh -huh. And uh, a lot that I learned or got involved with was there. And then, of course, back in the day, the only thing, the sport you really could play that was organized was Little League Baseball. Okay. So I played uh, Little League as soon as I could, starting at 8. It started at eight years old right. back then, but I'd already been playing a lot with this rec program and right. thing. And, but uh, and so then as I moved to uh, up through to high school, it was just part of me, you know. Just so I was sports a and stuff like three that. sport guy. Played baseball, played football, uh, played basketball, and uh, was fortunate to have some very uh, excellent coaches, mentors that that I'm sure that I uh, uh, learned from and stole philosophies from yeah, and everything. Yeah. Guys like uh, Guy Connu, who's a very famous sports figure from around the area, mm -hmm. who went on to uh, head coach at uh, Edinburgh for basketball. But his real claim to fame became the last 25 to 30 years was he was in Major League Baseball and Minor League Baseball as a coach, and uh -huh. actually. And uh, Guy was... He and a guy by the name of Jerry Mattis was my head football coach. Jerry sadly passed away when he was 27 years old. <clears throat> and uh, I, I just loved him like a dad. And when I turned 27, that was one of the hardest things I could fathom. Like, how did this guy pass away right, 27 years at 27 old. years old? Right. You know? So here I sit at 74 years old and he had a young family and a wife, two kids. And wow. So I thought a lot about mm -hmm. all that as I grew up. A guy, basketball with John Phillips, and uh, John spent a lot of years at Northwestern. He was a captain of the basketball and baseball team at Penn State during his years. Wow. And so he had a lot to share mm -hmm. with me. So I think I got the biggest influence then. With in that. your younger years. Yeah, you know, for sure. Getting around all those different For people. sure. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 What was family like? Did you grow up with both parents or? Yeah, I did. I did. Uh, you know, my dad was a car dealer. My mother was a homemaker, which that's kind of the way it was back mm -hmm. then. Yeah. And uh, my dad had a successful business out in Albion. And uh, so we, you know, we had a nice middle class life, myself and my, my brother, Bob, who's still, uh, he lives in the Girard area now. Okay. And, uh, but, uh, you know, we were two different creatures. You know, I was always in this, and he was doing his right, thing. Right. And But he's five years younger than I. And uh, 
my mom and dad have passed, but uh, you know they, they they gave us a nice life and everything, and uh, uh, you know it, it prompted me though to want to. I lived in a small town so long, I kind of wanted to get my wings on, you know. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I chose to go to Western Michigan University in college. Okay. They recruited me for football, but I had a real, pretty severe injury, and I didn't want to do that. So I walked on in you know, baseball, and I spent a couple, two years or three years, it was in the baseball program. Okay. Didn't get a lot of playing time, but right. but have some great friends. Great memories, and friends. Yeah, and, yeah, and that, yeah, I was yeah. part of something. Mm -hmm. being, and I, I always tell my players, there's there's a reward of being a part of something. Oh, yeah. You don't have to be the star. You don't have to be the big fish. Being a part of something and learning and and enjoying it is fine, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so I, I learned that right. during those years for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's life like? Uh, what, what memories do you have? A small because you say you came from a small town. So what what is that like for people who maybe grew up in the big city? Or yeah. I, well, you know, it's, it's kind of like a, everybody knows everybody and and all of the players and the kids I went to school with and so on. We, we were best friends for a lot of years and we remained best friends in high school. Mm -hmm. Things just didn't change a whole lot, right. you know. Uh, but but just like anywhere, you get your best friends too, you know. And right. I have uh, one of my best friends went off to Vietnam and he was uh, injured uh, and has, you know, kind of suffered from that injury mm -hmm. wounds and so on for his whole life almost, and we're still great friends and that, right, but he right. shrapnel all up and mm -hmm. down his leg and as a 17, 18 year old kid, you know? Right. And then one of my other best friends that we were really tight and coached with a lot was a fellow by the name of John Gillette. And John, uh, he and I coached together. He was the head coach at Northwestern, not the first guy I worked for, but, and then he actually came and spent some time with me he went on to General McLean, had some great years and everything. He was very successful. But uh, you may recall, uh, he was the teacher, the coach that got shot and right, killed out at name. Nick's place. Mm -hmm. But John and I, uh, it's been uh, 26 years now. And, uh, you know, he lost, uh, he, he missed out on, on life as an right, adult. Right. Now, but. Uh, that being said, then I picked up all my other friends along the way. But Albion was a very small town. One of the play you could pick up the phone and it was a uh, what they call party lines. Mm -hmm. And you know the lady would go, Ronnie, get off the phone. This is Kay Anderson across the street. Get off the phone. You know they would they know right away right, right, who's, right, right. who's owning in on this conversation. Now. So all of that and 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 just everybody knew everybody kind of right, you know right, so. Right. But it was a good time for me. Right. But I'm glad I got out because it opened some doors and other views. Especially I, I went to Western in '67, uh, so to be on college campuses in '67, '8, '9, there was a lot of turmoil and unrest going on in mm -hmm. that. So for a, some young guy from a little town of 1,500 people living in Kalamazoo, Open dry, Michigan, opened up a little bit. Oh, there. baby. And all, all for good, though. Right. All for good, right. for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you go on to high school and you play high school. How many, what sports did you play in high school? I played uh, football, basketball, and baseball. And um, I played quarterback and DB. And the two, the senior and the junior quarterbacks, my sophomore year, both got hurt in like game three or two. <laughs> and so I got shuffled in. in. And I had a nice. A nice year, and then I had a nice junior year until I dislocated and chipped my left elbow, and I lost about seven games in my junior year. But the other thing that was bad, I lost my basketball season, I lost my baseball mm -hmm. season too, because I couldn't, back in the day, they didn't, they just like, you know, try to pull it back together. Right, right, right. And I had a lot of, I, I had to work really hard to even get the mobility I have to this mm -hmm. day. But then I came back my senior year and I had a uh, three, you know, three sport guy. And I, I I think I had a pretty successful senior year at quarterback. And then um, I had a really good year at basketball and I was never a starter until that year. And then uh, baseball was probably my best 
sport always, and I had a real nice uh, year that year. So, oh, okay. Anyways, right. Yeah. So, what was the uh, was it the ECL league back then? Was it was. It much, what was yeah, that like? Like the old Plano? ECL. Yeah. What was that like? Plano? You didn't have to travel very far. You know, going to Corey was like like going to State College or something for <laughs> us. You know, <laughs> right. and Union City was a long, and then like Northeast was like was so mm -hmm. far. You know, from right. Albion. But it was very competitive. At least it seemed like it was back mm -hmm. then. Um, you know, we had we didn't have that many big time football players that went on. Very small schools, classes of some schools had guys of class of a hundred or ninety. I think we had a hundred and forty or something when I graduated, right. and that was the girls as well. You know, mm -hmm. so and uh, but it was. Uh, a little unique because there wasn't soccer, there wasn't uh, swimming, there wasn't golf until like my senior year or mm -hmm. something they started it. So, and then, and then the girls, my wife was probably the best athlete that I knew and she ran AAU track and for uh, the guy that ran the big track club and uh -huh. here he came and got her. And quite honestly, her numbers in that that she did, she probably would have competed if not won state championships and stuff. Right, right. She ran AAU, she ran against gold medal winners wow. and stuff. And, mm -hmm. But so, uh, you know, that's the probably best athlete in the family was my wife, my wife. for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Any, any real good memories you have of uh, something from high school you really remember from? Oh, uh, you mean was it me Northwestern? Playing, me playing, playing or, or just anything oh, about? Oh, we had a, you know, we had a, it went, one thing was that I think it was the first year in the history of the school that we had a winning record. Okay. So that was big because uh, uh, the guy I spoke of, Jerry Madison, just come in and it sort of re made football important, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And he, and there was a some off season type things, but really just got the community involved and so mm -hmm. on, that, which. It takes the village, right? Right, I mean, right, exactly. Uh, that, and then uh, we had a really good senior year in basketball, our team did, and uh, we didn't win the county, but we went to, uh, I think I went to the district 10 championship, and uh, it was like uh, the old Lawrence Park High School. It might have been Iroquois at that time, maybe. Maybe it became Iroquois. And then Cambridge Springs, which is a small town, but they had great basketball back then. <laughs> and they had like uh, four losses. They're playing for the championship, and we'd given them three <laughs> of them, you know. But but we we were late bloomers in mm -hmm. the back half. But right. and then baseball, I uh, you know I really loved baseball, and uh, I was an outfielder, pitcher in high school, but moved on through the legion, played in the state legion game, and. It just, you know, it was a good thing. Right. No, it was nothing extra special, mm -hmm. but... But like you said, you were a part of something, and it was a... Oh, you know, yeah. Had memories were less... Oh, less yeah, quiet, the coaches you know? and the people and mm -hmm. my friends. And, yeah. And, uh, you know, old memories now, yeah. but that's it's still great to talk about them and oh, think yeah. about them. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, when did you know, like, you wanted to be a coach? Did you... I, I can tell you exactly when I figured that out. Guy Connie, who I spoke of, Jerry Mess, who I spoke of earlier, and they had a crew of teachers. And I, I worked for my dad's car lot in the summer, and I was the wash guy, buff guy, wax guy, you mm -hmm. know. And they would, they'd come rolling in in like a big old 98 or something, and Jerry's, I think. He was like 6'2", 340 pounds. Uh -huh. So he had a big old car, you know. Right. He'd come on in, and it'd be all them. They were going golfing. And uh, down at Conneaut Lake at the time, I, I remember. And they were always coming in. Hey, hey, Sonny, that was my dad's name. Mm -hmm. Hey, Sonny, can Ronnie go with us? No, no, he's got to, <laughs> he's got to finish up. Maybe next week he could go, but he needs to wax that car, buff it, and wax it. I'm taking it to the auction tomorrow or something, yeah. you know. And, and I was okay with that, mm -hmm. you know, making my two dollars an hour. He'd pay me big money. Right, you know? right, right, right. <laughs> and uh, but I thought, man. These guys are doing what they love, and they got all summer off. And they're and some of them worked that rec program mm -hmm. I was saying, 
And then the other days they'd go golf or do this. Right, they had the time, free time, at least. And and do, do what they wanted to do for the. They were all football guys, mm -hmm. so they were coaching us. And I thought I might have to pursue this. You know, I I, I don't have any other big dreams or anything. Right. This maybe I'm going to do that. I I did though. I did think about law school and things. And uh, so when I went to college, I. I I did a double major. I did political science and uh, health and phys ed. Okay. And in the end, that was a real bonus for me because I finished it off into a social studies certificate and did this and that. And, and in the end, in my teaching career, I, the first half of it, I spent all social studies. And then the back half, about 18, 19 years, it was all health and phys ed. It was all phys ed. I didn't even have to teach health, which... I don't have to go do a class. Right, you're just right, doing something you love. Right, right. I'm not right. saying it was real easy, but it was easier than the other way, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so it, it, there's no doubt about it. it I, Those guys kind of influenced you. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then I got a little taste of it because I, when I student taught, uh, the head coach came and hunted me down. I was at a school called Portage, Portage Northern, um, right outside of Kalamazoo, kind of like Mill Creek is here. And he saw me, and he saw my jacket, you know, things I'd mm -hmm. done. And he said, why don't, you, why don't you come out and help it? We're starting a 7th and 8th grade football program. Come on out here, and let's, let's see what you can do, and I'll help you along. And he was his varsity guy. Mm -hmm. And he saw I'd been around it quite a bit. Right. He goes, oh, man, you can run this. Just You and this other guy are going to run the 7th and 8th grade program. Right. Well, so as a student teacher, I, I didn't even think about money. I could care less about right. money. I thought... This is pretty cool. He trusts me, and mm -hmm. so um, I, I think that's how I got bit. Really, just yeah. And then uh, I graduated and came back home, and I'm you know like everybody else, I'm going to start searching for a job. And my old principal, a guy by the name of Darwin Cook, and John Christensen, John recently passed, mm -hmm. but John was a big name in Erie football. He was a uh, head coach at uh, Northwestern. Okay. So that's who hired me the first get-go right there. Mm -hmm. And the principal I knew, it's my old school, right? right. So so I had a little... You had it in your heart for you. Uh, right, right, yeah, and I had, a little, I had a little capital there, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I had to take like two classes at Gannon or something to get my other certification for Pennsylvania, and they put me on a emergency certificate and I thought well this probably isn't very fair there's other guys but I'm not saying anything you know mm -hmm. so I did that and uh, and before you know it you know I was full blown and John Gillette was already there and uh, then John Christensen left he went to Academy okay back then uh, I'm, I'm guessing maybe he replaced Tommy Robinson. I'm not. Yeah, I think that I think I just. That's, I just that sounds some about guys right. Guys saying that to me recently, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and he had a he had a nice crew of Erie named guys on that. Well, John Gillette and I were. John was a year ahead of at uh, teaching on me. We were same age and same. And the, the principal Darwin Cook. I always tell this because it's a cute story. I think they said, uh, "Well, if if." Uh, you know, they interviewed us, and in the interview, one of the questions was, all right, Ronnie, well, you know, if if John gets the job, are you willing to coach with him? And I said, of course I will. He's my best friend. He said, <laughs> you know, of course I will. And then they asked John, and Cookie even told me, and John even told me, they said, if Ronnie gets the job, are you willing to work for him? Hell no, I'm not working for him. I got the. I've been here a year before him. I'm like, I thought we were best friends. Right, 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 right. That, well, that you know, we still remain friends. I I wasn't mad at all over it or anything. But he was actually upset that they would even ask him like, you know. be an assistant for you. So we had a great. We had some great years though. We undefeated, first undefeated team out there. We won. Uh, man, I think we won. Uh, we broke. One of my favorite guys in the history of football around here is Jack Beswick. He's a legend, you know, mm -hmm. and we we were fortunate enough to break Jack's 27-game win streak. We beat him, and uh, I think we 
you know, we we won. Uh, we had two seasons that one undefeated and one that won seven games uh -huh. or something, and, and had some huge wins for back then. You know. Right. Right. So and then, uh, you know, I just I, I let's see how it went. Oh, John got the job at McDowell then back in uh well, from a seventy eight. To... Yeah. You know, and he was had the good fortune of being able to, he had like three, there were three or four teaching openings. So he was able to hire who he wanted to hire for, I think it was three of them. So he came and saw me, and if I had to go through the interview process and that, and they said, yeah, we'll accept him. Mm -hmm. So I got a job. A guy by the name of Jim McGowan, who was a coach out at Fort LaBeouf, and he was a head coach uh, out there, but John hired him. He was an English teacher. And then the other guy you had on TV, he got pets, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's how I got to McDowell. That wasn't, I wasn't really looking, mm -hmm. but, and it was all good. You know, it changed things for me, leaving a small town, a little smaller program. Mm -hmm. Getting involved, traveling, seeing things, seeing how they're meeting some great people, and you know, in the community, uh, Mill Creek is Mill Creek even back then. You know, right. uh, you know, if you weren't on your game, you might not be there very long. Mm -hmm. you right. Know? Right. So, High expectation, and that was okay. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, and that's spinning out of the Joe Warriors and stuff. You know, and they were they were pretty ragged for. Did he come right after? Joe was Joe was before us. There was like Joe was in the sixty, like sixty eight or nine. Mm -hmm. so seven. Like he, he was there a few other years, and then a guy by the name of Tom Dean was there one year. They they ran him off. Then I think a guy by the name of Jim Paul got it. They thought they were getting uh, the big deal, you know, because he played for the Broncos and they brought him in, mm -hmm. and things just didn't work out. Right. It just didn't work out. He was a nice guy and everything. But he was able to bring a couple guys in who ended up staying, and they were really good football because they coached for me, some of them, even 15 years later or whatever. And then a guy by the name of Gary Kalerick, a local guy that was a prep star. Okay. He was, I think he was an assistant out there and maybe an assistant there too, and that didn't work out. And then... Uh, John got the job then, and then when when John uh, moved on, he be, he was the AD, but they were kind of looking to do something different. We were just sort of caught, you know. Mm -hmm. I got the head job in '83 and got fired in '83. <laughs> I did, and that's a whole other story. I'm not going to go into. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. And then guess what? And got hired back in '83. <laughs> And there's a guy that asked me, it, it was it was unbelievable, the drama in the papers every day and everything. Right. Like, you'd have thought that, uh, you know, I was a bandito or something. I had done nothing. They were, there was a list of uh, 15 reasons, I think it was, of why they were going to fire me from the school board. And it was stuff like uh, we saw two assistant coaches under the goalpost in the stadium after a loss. Like that, that's the kind of stuff. Too many, too many penalties and timeouts, and there was just like, well, what did I do? And, you know, and it was things. That, uh, some of the things were logical that I didn't want. I didn't want to pay the district. I think it was thirty five hundred dollars or four thousand dollars. They were charging us to sleep in the gym during preseason out of For my camp. budget. Wow. I mean, just it's crazy mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. So the. It was the last day of school, and I'd been hired back. I ran a weight room the whole time. We were going to have a good team. There's no doubt that. And uh, I think this assistant superintendent came to see me, and he said, well, you know, do you have your staff put together? I said, I've told you for three months that you got to bring these guys in and either talk to them. You don't have to give them a full-blown apology, but you got to talk to them. Or you got to write him a letter, but you got to make amends here. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, we can't. We can't do that. You know, the amends is that you've you're hired back. I said, but they don't want to work for you. They won't work for me because they don't want to work for you. 
well, you know, we hired you, and we think that's the way it, that's the way it's going to go. Mm -hmm. And I reached in my back pocket. I had my resignation. I gave it to him. <laughs> I gave it to him. I gave it to him. Last day of school. And I knew that they got what they wanted because the guy said to me, well, at least you're giving us enough time to get another head coach. Mm. Now, that being said, a great friend of mine, personal friend of mine, since we were little kids, Joey Sanford, Joey came in and had a, he won a league and everything that next year. And eventually he fell on some hard times, typical Mill Creek mm. Indian, I say. And so Dave Hanlon came, the AD came and saw me. And I'd been back out at Northwestern, and we won the District 10 championships, and blah, blah, blah. And he said, why don't you come back and coach? I said, I don't think you want me. I said, I, I really think, I said, I'll be honest with you, I kind of feel like Superman, and nobody's going to take me down this time. Not for those kind of mm -hmm. reasons. If I stink and the team stinks and everything, fine. But he goes, no, I think I think it's your time, you know. And they, and we were rock pretty rock bottom. Wasn't very many kids or nothing. Mm -hmm. Joe had some tough times. And so within a few years, we were on top of our game. You yeah, know? Yeah. Took a lot of work. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and things just became different a little bit, you right. know. Right. You know, being nice to people and not telling them, don't ask me questions or anything. I just, I said, I'm not, I'm not Coach Rudler. I'm Ron, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm Ron. And, uh, you know, a name, I'd say the guy's name. I said, we got to be friends. Mm -hmm. You can't just lambaste me for no good reason or anything. I right. said, I'm your buddy. So when you ask me why did you run that screenplay on third down, I'm going to tell you. Because I wanted to, that's why. <laughs> what do you think about that? You know, so I was like, that's, that, my, my, I was never, that's not really my personality, mm -hmm. but I, but when you go through trauma and stuff and get beat down, like they say, it'll kill you and make you stronger, oh, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so that was a huge lesson for me. And then I also, I learned, uh, the other thing I learned in uh, some of those years was that, it's amazing. The harder you work, the better you do. <laughs> yeah. You know, and surrounding, getting good people around you and and making the kids play by the rules you want and the standards you set and being firm and not not wavering. Nobody got a deal. Nobody got, mm -hmm. everybody got treated the same. No matter who your mom and dad or your financial status or right. which side of the town you lived in. Everybody had to play by the same deal. And the more that it became like that, the more successful it became, for sure. It was a big deal. And, uh, and then having some great people, right. assistance, right. too, you know, so a lot of fun. But a life lesson, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any, uh, uh, some of your philosophies uh, as far as, because, um, I mean, you guys were always pretty close to the top or at the top. Yeah. So how did you, what are some philosophies that you have or things that you try to convey to kids well, or your coaches or? You know, a lot of people have like sayings that, but but the, the first people that have to be under your, with, well, first of all, I always thought I was with everybody. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, I know I had the HC on my jacket. Right. But I'm with you too, just as much as I'm with that parent over there, I'm, we're, we're all friends here. Mm -hmm. We're all working. Now, maybe I can make the final say, but I want your input. Right. And I'm going to search for it, you know. And, and you, I, want, I don't care if you're a rookie or not. If something doesn't feel right or look right or blah, blah, blah. And, and, I ha and the other thing that I think is important, that you have to get your assistants to buy in in this accountability thing and everybody on a one track how these kids are going to be treated, and mm -hmm. so on. And I was fortunate enough that the guys that I had with me were just that. I mean, and the more disciplined we became, that, that could have been a lot of things. It wasn't just on the field. It was in a classroom. It was uh, being on time at places, uh, being in a weight room, mm -hmm. coming to summer workouts, and 
And, and, you, and the thing I liked the most about it was you could see it grow. It grow. And I always talk to people about, is the program growing or shrinking? Mm. And you can see it. You just look around and you'll, you'll tell if a program is shrinking or is it growing. Mm. And that doesn't mean just how many people you have, but right. you can tell. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the beauty of it all is it. So, you know, I always had, I always had little corny things. Like if you don't tell them, they don't know. So like if a kid was doing something wrong. And then the other thing was don't, do not waste your time punishing kids on this field. You know, I went over one day, Mark Sobolewski, I love him, my mm -hmm. brother. And he had one of our quarterbacks run around the field. I said, what, what is so, what's he doing? He goes, I ain't did this and that. I said, I got news for you. Get him back in the drill to do it right. <laughs> and, and make him work in the drills. And then you stay out. You want to punish him? Fine. But you stay after practice and punish him. Don't, don't waste time, you know, the, the efficiency of your practices. That, that was always good. But, yeah, I just, I think the consistency more, mm -hmm. more than anything else. Right. Demanding. Demanding your best always, and then if you didn't give it, you're gonna get it. One one cute story was uh, the new head coach at McDowell right now, Aaron Slocum. I love him like he's my son. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a, if you've not met him, he's a great. Oh yeah, I've known him. Yeah. Uh, Aaron's a fantastic mm -hmm. person, but he and a guy by the name of uh, Jay Elwell. <laughs> I love Jay too, but. Uh, they felt the wrath one time that we were going to go play down at South Stadium. And I told everybody before, do not be late for school. And I don't mean PIAA late. Do not be on the absentee list. Do not be on the tardy list. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. So I go down to practice the next day. And John Cachon, who I love, John had said, hey, Ronnie, Elwell and Slocum, they're they're on the list, man. <laughs> I said, not a problem. And I go down and I said, I'm going down to the locker room after my last class. And I walk through the locker room like I always did to see what's going on, you know. And there they are, sitting in the, in the getting room. Hey, coach, what's up, man? I'm fired up for practice. Big game tomorrow night. I said, yes, it is. I said, come in here. Come in here and see me. And there was like two or three other coaches mm -hmm. getting their stuff on. I said, let me ask you something. What's the last thing I told everybody before <laughs> leaving practice? Don't, don't be late. Well, we, we weren't late. We weren't late, you know. Like you have until quarter to 11 and you're still legal. I said, did I say that? No, you said don't be late for any reason. But, but, but. I said, that's right. All right, now you're going to find out why there are rules. I said, pick up a telephone. <laughs> Jason first, he picks the phone up, what do you want me to do? I said, I want you to call your mom and dad, tell them you're not playing in the state quarterfinals. <laughs> he's, now he's starting to, I said, I'm not mad at you, but you gotta learn, this is, mm -hmm. what, this is the way the things work. So he calls him, mom, <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to play in, <laughs> why? As I was late for school. Why? What is it? His mom's crying. She's got to hand it over to. Uh, uh, and I love these people. Mm -hmm. He's got to hand it to Howie, and Howie was like almost tearing up too. What's up? And I then I got the phone. I said, "Hey, don't be mad. I'm not mad at Jay. I said I love him, but he's not playing. No matter what, he's not playing. He violated the rules. Blah blah blah. So then I get the phone. I hand it to Slocum. And he says, "Yes, you want." Me. Call my dad. I said, I want you to call your dad. <laughs> Jerry was the head coach yep. again. Mm -hmm. He goes, oh, he's he's up in northern Michigan. They're playing basketball up there. I said, I don't care. I said, ring that phone. He's got a cell, right? Yes, sir. He calls him. He goes, Dad. He goes, I, I want you to know that I'm not going to be playing in the state quarterfinals down in Pittsburgh. He goes, really? Let me talk to Coach Ruther. And he, and he told him, like, I was late for school or whatever. Right, right, right. And it wasn't skipped. It was, I was late, mm -hmm. you know. And Jerry gets on there, and I said, hey, Coach. And I, and I, I thought, am I going to get a shot, or what am I going to mm -hmm. get? He goes, good for you. 
<laughs> and I thought, there you go. Right, right. There you Got go. It, right, everybody's on the same page, right. And there were other stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I had a Hoosiers moment where a kid came in and his dad brought him in on Thursday night before the game. And uh, it was well, just like Hoosiers, you know. And the guy goes, Coach Ruler. <laughs> he says, I forget what the kid's name was right now. It was a Peterson, but he was a good kid, too quiet. He goes, he got something he wants to tell you. <laughs> I said, and this kid never said anything. Mm -hmm. He goes, he's got his head down. He goes, Coach, I got arrested for underage drinking behind the ground round last night. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, well, there's rules for that. And the school has rules, and I enforce the school's rules. Mm -hmm. I said, how many games are left? He goes, three games. I said, do you know what the penalty is for that? He goes, I think you lose a third of your remaining games. I said, what's a third of three? He goes, one. I said, so you ain't playing this week. Mm -hmm. I said, but there will be a little bit of hell to pay until you play in two weeks, too, though. <laughs> You know, I said, you, this is going to, you're going to have to deal with the school because they're going to wonder why I'm sitting here or whatever. Mm -hmm. and all, the, all those kids that suffered through some of the stuff like that were friends. You right, know? They all still love you, right? right yeah, right, you know right, what I mean? Right, yeah. Tough love. I'm, you go through it oh, all yeah, the time, oh, yeah, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. But that's, you know, I hope that that's one of the things that, Younger coaches and the players and that even saw that like this is the way you got to do it. You got to stay on the straight and narrow for things. You know? Right. So and that's it. When you look back at your career, was there something uh, like the high point at your uh, as you were head coach at McDowell or anything like this? Or like man, um, this is well, you know, uh, the I mean, uh, undoubtedly the the three year run that we had was really pretty hard to match it. And I mean, God bless Prep and Mike and Mish, you know, and all the guys there, man, because the, they they were really, really cruising. Mm -hmm. And was and early in that, right before our run, it was, or right after, it was hard to compete with them, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. we were still pretty good, but we couldn't get past Eddie right Hank going, Bobby Sanders and mm -hmm. Juwan and, and all the big linemen and stuff, you know. But those three years were a lot of fun, exceptional. And, and um, you know, I think we won 12 games, 13 games, and then 11. And we lost five games total through all of that. And only two games in a regular season in three years. So when you go through that journey, not for me, but the coaches, the players, best yet, the parents mm -hmm. and the community it was easy to see we were riding pretty high, you know, through those years. And then eventually it's going to slow down or come, not come to an end. But And that's kind of what happened. And you're sort of disappointed, but ain't going to go forever, you know. Right, right. And, uh, but I, one, th one thing that I've always thought a lot about is, like, the, the schools that have never experienced that. Players, communities, moms and dads, fans. You know, they fight through year in and year out at, at uh, you know, two and seven or or four and five, and they right. never get in a playoff game. They never get to travel like the community goes. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. You played on a championship team. It's a special Yeah, it is. It's, it's just special. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. so you'll never forget whether it's one year or whether it's three years or whether it's ten years. When you ride together in that, and the fans and stuff, it just, and you know what, I had a, I had more than one principal tell me that I worked for. Boy, when you start off the season, the school year with a really good football season, man, the school, the school runs better. Yep, I've heard that. And before. you know what, I truly believe that. Mm -hmm. uh, don't ask me why exactly, but the kids in the school have a little more pep and the non-athletes even, you know, mm -hmm. and mom and dad in the community. and But the school itself, it just, and, you know, I had probably three different principals tell me that. Pretty wise, I think. Yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah. Um, 
A couple more questions for you, Coach. Sure. Um, so I know Prep McDowell's a, a pretty big rival, and I know you've coached at both places. Oh, yes. What's that like for people? I always wondered what, because it seems like such how a big rivalry. Is. Yeah. What, what is how that like? How big it is? When I first got to McDowell, it was massive. You know, it's like, and I think that's from the Joe Moore years and uh, whoever, they had a couple different coaches there and stuff, and it just became rivalry. But also back in those years, East, mm -hmm. you know, was... Yeah, everybody was... Everybody was pretty god -gun good, mm -hmm. you know. Academy was really good at times, and Vincent. And, but, but anyways, the first thing that, as an outsider, not being an Erie guy or a Mill Creek guy, mm -hmm. my view was a little bit different how I looked at it all. Yeah. And I thought, why, why are these people so <laughs> mean? Why do, what's the... You know, we we had a big rivalry with Jack Beswick and Fairview, but we didn't hate each other or nothing. And the players didn't. Mm -hmm. But other coaches in the lower programs are, yeah, they're calling them scum and this. And I was like, I can't take that. You know, I'm yeah. I'm just not like that. I I admire good football players and teams and coaches mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. But um, to say it wasn't a big game, it was a big game. It was always a huge game. And we were, you know, we took it on the chops a few times. I, Timmy Calicchio, who is a huge name in Erie football, I can remember him running his, I think it was his seventh touchdown down the sideline at the stadium with four minutes to go in a game when they're up like 50 something. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, why is he still in the game? Now, I'm going to tell you that stuff. There was a time where they beat us bad and they faked the extra point to score 50. This was either in 90 or 91. Well, the tide started to turn. turn a little and bit. In, in 93, we beat them. We scored late and they missed the Bowmans, who were great kickers. Uh, I even coached with them, the one who missed it. I forget which one it is now. But he always had an excuse of why he missed it. And I said, you missed it because we had the block team in. And you jerked it. You got in a hurry. And don't give me that. <laughs> but, uh, but like all those things that we had to take it. And then when we came through the line, and I don't hate him for it, but I always remember Minna wouldn't shake my hand, you know. And uh, I love, uh, Minna and I were friendly. Mm -hmm. right? Were we best friends? No, we're from two different schools right, and two different right. philosophies and but I always remembered that, and I thought, I'll never do that to anybody. Yeah. I'll never, I'm going to be gracious whether I win or lose and humble. And, and I, that's just the way it was. But, but all that, and then, then we got on a streak. I think we beat them five or six times in a row because mm -hmm. we were playing them in the playoffs two years. And, For D10 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Beat yeah. them in regular, beat them D10, to mm -hmm. move on, beat them in D10. Right, right. And they, the people weren't happy with that. The Mill Creek people were happy, yeah. but, but anyways, yeah, the big, and it's funny how it carries over to all the sports, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, huge A little, little different, you know. Yeah. I think it lost a little luster, to be honest with you, though, because of the way the region, the playoffs are not in the same classification. Mm -hmm. When you knew you had to get through prep or they had to get through us. It became tough, yeah, it was. Oh. And, and even, I'll be honest with you, when you, when you guys finish your careers at Central, we knew, like, these guys are really good. <laughs> They're good. We're going to, how can we get past this, you know? And uh, and we did. Yeah, you know, I mean, you guys had some great teams there, man. Great team. Timmy Holland was a great guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I look back terrible. now and, you know, and I just realized what a coach he was, actually. Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't realize it when I was playing, but when yeah. I look back and, where he took us from and where we were able to go. Absolutely. I, I, I pull realized us, it now. Pull the students together and mm -hmm. the team together and everything. Yeah. You know, you know what other else is really cool about him? And I didn't know him real, real well, but I think we were friends, you know. But he did it from the ground up, meaning he's coaching in the Catholic schools, the little kids moving up, mm -hmm. doing this, then as an assistant, different things. And he paid his dues. And right. then when he arrived he knew what he was doing mm -hmm. you know yep, he I had a lot of respect for timmy yeah. yeah so coach uh i know um i i met you a few times when i was playing 
Oh, uh, absolutely. Just at different places, you know, football little camps or sure. a track or whatever it was. But you yeah. were always, uh, I remember you being really nice, you know, even like to guys that didn't play for you. Sure. Um, and I knew, I, I knew like this guy's got to be a great coach just by the way he treats me and I'm not even playing for him. Yeah. Was that something you tried to do or is that just a part of you, your coaching or? Uh, I don't know. I hope that's just the way I am, you know. Mm -hmm. I just hope that uh, that uh, everybody can be my friend, you know, then uh, if we treat each other well and and so on. But like, yeah, sometimes a coach to another young kid somewhere, I just, I don't know, I guess that's just, I just think that's are. maybe the way my dad and mom were. Mm -hmm. And maybe I would, became like that, you know, I was always very open to new friends and they, you know right, what I mean? Right, it's just. Right. It's kind of how you brought up mm -hmm. and how you see people, and uh, I, I just, uh, I like that. I like that in a human being. So right. I hope I'm that way. I right. like, I like it, that. That's a nice compliment, and I want to stay that way. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to enjoy the people that I meet, and whether young or old, and take the time to do something for them if I can or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so it's all good. So anything else you want to share before we wrap up with Kate? The no, yeah, well, like always, I'd be remiss. Like my family, my wife, Karen, she was the, the biggest fan. She was uh, there every step of the way through all this stuff. You know, that's a lot of years and a commitment for for a woman, when a, a coach's wife, if you oh, will. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a huge, huge, and it doesn't always work out. Either the guy gets out of the sports or the, something else goes wrong or... <laughs> So I, I feel blessed that I had a, uh, you know, my wife, she loved everything about it and still wants me to go back and coach and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. which, uh, who knows, I might, I might pick my whistle back up someday, but I thought I, about it. I better hurry up and do it. <laughs> I better hurry up if I'm going to do it, you know, but and we all love it, right? I, I love it. I just love it. I love going and talking with other coaches mm -hmm. and stuff, but. But you know, you you start to distance yourself and you get out of the loop a little bit. So, right. but that's expected. That's expected. Anything to say uh, to your former coaches and players? If you could say something to them. Oh, I just uh, you know, I I thank every single one of them that I had the administrators that I had that treated me well, and and especially the coaches. There was there's so many, you know, and. Uh, and I, I, I just always saw those guys as equals, and, and I think that's very important for a young coach to, to realize if you're a head coach, you're, you're just another guy. You're, you're not going to go very far if, if they're not with you, and, right. and you don't help teach them. And I had, I had some great mentors outside of my coaches, too, like college guys that I went. I visited with Jim Trussell all the time, and I went to Kenny O'Keefe, who was at Allegheny, and... You know, moved on to the NFL yeah. eventually, but was with Kirk Ferentz. And I just tried to be a sponge. Right. But that, and then all the players. You'd be nowhere. You'd be absolutely nowhere without your right. players, you know. And right. Thank them for the hard hours and the trips and sacrifice they made. Everybody makes sacrifice. Mm -hmm. That's when you're on the same page. Right. So, so thanks. Uh, we, today we're here with Coach Ron Rudler. He was a former head coach at McDowell High School, very successful, and an assistant coach. Coach, we'd like to thank you for coming today. And, uh, thank you, Mom. Thanks for what you're doing here. It's a blast. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.